this is lecture 29 of condensed matter physics 1. And this lecture continues with what we have been learning about lattice vibrations. And we discussed today how we measure the, the, the dispersion relation for these vibrations. So, let me just recap. what we have learnt and that is this. Given a crystal its atoms vibrate right atoms vibrate in normal modes and these are modes with well defined frequency for a given k and this omega dependence on k is known as dispersion relation. So, that is the first thing that we learnt and what we learnt after that is that when quantized the vibrating crystal can be thought of as a collection of harmonic oscillators each with omega k. So, what we have done essentially is that this crystal that we had all these connected by springs that is the model that we have taken has been replaced by collection of harmonic oscillators and those quanta is known as phonons. So, this is like these phonons are whizzing around with their own k k 1 k 2 k 3 k 4 and so on and each one has energy h cross omega k each phonon and what we have is this crystal in this the picture is that I have a collection of harmonic oscillators for as far as energy is concerned and this is the energy of the system. So, what we did at the beginning of this week in lecture 25, we have generalized this and made it more formal that these 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 vibrations can really the crystal vibrations can be thought of as uh, as harmonic oscillators within harmonic approximation and the energy is given with harmonic oscillator energy. This is pretty much like when you take a cavity in which electromagnetic waves are there and you can replace them by photons moving around with speed c. These phonons are moving around with speed given by the phase velocity is omega by k, but more important the group velocity is d e d k 1 over h cross. So, this, this is what we have learnt and within a model where we model the potential between the ions and also looked at the, the crystal with the basis what we found 
is that omega k versus k is given by a curve like this and also a curve like this and the upper curve arises only in a basis or the crystal with the basis this is known as acoustic phonon now i'm going to call them phonon and the slope at the origin is the sound velocity and the upper one is called optical phonon i have shown only two branches in addition so the, there are the longitudinal phonons and transverse phonons in both optical and acoustic branches so now what we want to learn in this lecture is how to measure omega k versus k for both and the technique is the standard technique bring in a particle and this interacts with the lattice or crystal and goes out and in the process of interaction the external particle one exchanges momentum with the phonons and two exchanges energy with the phonons so by measuring how much energy it has gained or lost how much momentum it has gained or lost i am actually measuring the momentum and energy of the phonon so if i make a picture again here is this crystal in which i have these phonons moving around the particle comes in hits a phonon either absorbs it or creates a phonon and goes out so there's a k in coming in that is the h cross k in being the momentum k out and it creates a phonon of lattice wave vector q and then there is energy coming in epsilon depending on k in epsilon k out and then in the process there is a omega q which is created so this is a picture it essentially becomes a collisional problem a particle comes in collides with the phonon does the momentum exchange does the energy exchange and that is if we solve those equations and relate them with experiments we have found our omega q versus q curve the equations that i told you about in the previous lecture during these exchanges one the conservation laws one is that k in coming in will be equal to k out plus q that's kind of momentum conservation if you like and then we have epsilon k in that the energy that comes in gets divided into epsilon k out plus h cross omega q that is the phonon has been created so these are the two conservation laws that have to be obeyed just a reminder that h cross q is not the momentum of crystal 
what it is known as crystal momentum. But it is not the momentum of the crystal. Net momentum of crystal is zero, as I had asked you to show in the previous lecture. Now let us look at some numbers. What are the relevant numbers? Numbers. So the lattice spacing is of the order of 1 to 5 angstroms. So, k is going to be of the order of 1 over 1 to 5 angstrom. So, that is roughly 10 raise to 10 meter inverse. Let us write it 10 raise to 9 to 10 raise to 10 meter inverse. Uh, that is uh, the not k since I am calling this q. Let me write this as Q phonon. How do I get that? This is the wave vectors within the Brunei zone because we had learnt it is only these wave vectors that matter. That is number one. Number two, I had shown you that epsilon equals h cross omega, which you can also guess from here, is of the order of you know uh, MeV. So that's that's right. MeV, right? Let's like. room temperature k p t. So, what you want is that the external particle should be able to exchange q of the order of 10 raise to 10 meter inverse and energy in MeV range. If you can do that, then you have got the phonon dispersion relation. Let us look at some candidates for this. Possible candidates for probing a phonon. The most obvious one, the first one that we look at is light. So, light is of the order of lambda equals let us say 5000 angstrom. X rays will be much smaller, but lambda certainly for light, ordinary light is of this order. So, k for light, which is 2 pi over lambda, will be 2 pi over 5 times 10 raise to minus 7 meter inverse. So, this is of the order of 10 raise to 7 meter inverse. So, if you look at this picture of omega versus k, up to this point is of the order of 10 raise to 10 meter inverse and k light is 10 raise to 7, it is 1000th of that. So, k light can probe only this much area, this region. So, this is the region that can be probed. So, yes, I mean it is useful, but only for that region. The other candidate could be an electron, which are used in you know the studying nuclei and all that. 
So, electron again since we want energy in the range of MeV, we want thermal electrons. So, let us say energy is of the order of 10 MeV, 10 to 100. Um, so, this will be equal to h cross square k square over 2 Me. So, k would be 2 times 10 raise to minus 30 that is mass times 10 times 10 raise to minus 3 times 1.6 times 10 raise to minus 19 over 10 raise to minus 68 square root. So, let us see what does that come out to be that is square root of 10 raise to minus 30 times 10 raise to minus 2 times 10 raise to minus 19 times 10 raise to 68 that is 32 68 minus 30 is 36 minus 20 this is of the order of 10 raise to 8. Again very small, so it can explore regions near near the, the zone center, but the biggest disadvantage it has is electrons have long range strong, I mean strong not nuclear strong, but strong in the sense of very you know compared to van der Waals or you know what neutral particles have strong coulomb interaction. And therefore, you know incoming state for a de definite k outgoing state for a definite k may not be very well defined. So, these are these are not very advantageous to use. So, they are not used. Next let us look at a neutral particle and what comes in mind is then the thermal neutron. So, energy again is of the order of M e v and then k would be square root of 2000 times 10 raise to 8. So, that is roughly 10 raise to 9 to 10 raise to 10 meter inverse. So, that is in the right range. So, two possibilities then emerge from this is one light or x rays that will give you a little higher k for exploring region near the zone center and the second possibility is thermal neutrons to explore the entire zone. So, these are the techniques used of course, now you may ask that if I am doing neutrons how do I choose a particular wavelength neutron. So, those are the experimental techniques. Uh, so, let me discuss them one by one first let me take light scattering. In light scattering, there are two different scatterings. These are we are talking about inelastic scattering. One is Raman, and the other is Blois scattering. So the difference is that when I explore. I have already said that I am exploring region near k equals 0. So, Raman scattering is done to study optical phonons r by Raman and when this scattering is done by acoustic phonons this is known as 
Brillouin scattering. Let's derive the sum rules then. So, mathematics is quite simple in Raman scattering, the incoming is of the order of E v and E phonon is of the order of M e v. So, you measure the difference. Coming and outgoing light waves, and that gives you the frequency of optical phonons. That is Raman. Let us do Brillouin. And Brillouin scattering. going to have little k also coming in. Okay, again you will see in Raman you may ask why k does not come in. See optical optical phonons hardly have any dispersion those band those those omega versus k are almost flat. So, it does not really matter that much, but here it is going to matter. So, in this again what you are going to have is a uh, k will come in and k will go out and the difference is going to be the q vector of the phonon created. If I exaggerate here, maybe this is q and this whole region is roughly linear. So, we are still exploring that region. So, if the rotation of k is by theta, I am going to have q like this. Again keep in mind that the energy given by light is of the order of m e v and the energy of photon is of the order of e v. So, magnitude of k hardly changes that is an approximation I can make and it is going to be a very good approximation. So, in Brillouin scattering what is what you are actually doing is you bring in a k you take out a k this is connected by a q and this magnitude is almost the same as this it is like an isosceles triangle and if the k has changed by theta this is theta by 2. So, you can see that q magnitude is going to be given by 2 k light times sin theta by 2. Now, there is one more subtlety if I have this crystal and light is coming in, it goes in first and then interacts with this phonon and then goes out. So, this k light that I should be using should be k in the medium. So, q that is created magnitude is going to be 2 the refractive index n and then I can write k vacuum times sin theta by 2. This is 2 n omega by c sin theta by 2. Omega is frequency of light angular frequency and c is the speed of light. And then from this I know that 
omega q for phonons in the region that there where I am exploring is going to be V sound times q. So, this is going to be 2 n omega V sound divided by C sin theta by 2 and this is delta omega light. That is the relationship that you have in Blois scattering. So, if you if I measure delta omega of light incoming light and outgoing light difference in frequency, I can measure the speed of sound V s through this by measuring the angles, except that these are very difficult experiments, because you are trying to ex extract a very small number of the order of M E V from E V. So, so they require much more technology than you know very very sophisticated technology to detect such such small changes. So, that is number 2. Number 3 we talked about neutron scattering and a neutron scattering I am going to have this can explore the whole region. So, I am going to have k in equals k out plus q and epsilon n equals energy out plus h cross omega q. Keep in mind omega q is a general omega which gives the true dispersion relation. This is for phonon creation by a neutron getting scattered and the other one is going to be k out equals k n plus q and e out equals E n plus h cross omega q. This is going to be for a phonon getting absorbed or phonon annihilation. and you measure these and you get your curve. So, what I will do is I will send you some papers, some representative papers, some graphs that have been done using this. So, with this I will conclude this lecture. So, we have shown how phonon dispersion can be mapped using a scattering of light and neutrons by crystals and this is inelastic scattering of course, you can have elastic component also as we discussed in the previous lecture and, and that gives you the structure of the crystal. Thank you.